Christmas Break at UA Dorms Written by Change Girl Yuki And read by Eleanor Elizabeth Summary Late at night, when Hitoshi's unable to sleep, he's got a brain-to-mouth filter malfunction. Or, that's a pretty smile, Hitoshi whispered, then froze. Had he really said that out loud? From the surprised look on Izuku's face, he had. Hitoshi felt his cheeks catch fire, and then he hastily got up. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that, he apologised. Hopefully this wasn't going to be a big deal. Hopefully Izuku wouldn't catch on to what this could mean. Hopefully that wouldn't ruin their friendship. Hitoshi, did you mean that? Shinzo Hitoshi did not care about Christmas. With all of his time spent in the foster system, he didn't have many good memories of this foreign holiday anyways. The only thing he was looking forward to was that he would get to sleep in. If he managed to fall asleep, that is. So far, things weren't looking good in that department, though. Frustrated, Hitoshi glared at the ceiling of his dorm room. Maybe if he had been at home with his dads. Earlier that year, Aizawa and his husband had taken him in, and that was when Hitoshi learned what family was like. Maybe if he was at home, or just with them and the cats, maybe his mind would be able to rest peacefully. But this was not home. This was school. And even though there were so many security measures in place, Hitoshi didn't feel... safe. Glancing at the alarm clock on his nightstand, Hitoshi groaned. It was probably past two in the morning. If he didn't sleep soon, then he wouldn't be able to any more. And knowing his classmates, they would get up early in the morning, be loud and cheerful and wake him up for holiday festivities. Hitoshi was about to get up and make himself a cup of Pop's special evening tea when there was a soft, barely audible knock on the door. Frowning, the purple-haired teen got up and wrapped his blanket around his shoulders because it was rather chilly out of the comfort of his bed. Then, Hitoshi opened the door. The sight in front of him made his heart ache just a little more. Midoriya Izuku looked up at him, green eyes puffy, and there were dry tear tracks on his freckled cheeks. Izuku? Hitoshi asked, stepping aside to let the green bean into his room. Hesitantly, Izuku accepted the silent invitation, but stopped in the middle of his room, his hands fiddling with the hems of his pyjamas. Even a blind person could have felt that something was very, very wrong. And considering how cheerful Izuku had been just a few hours earlier when they said goodnight to each other in the common room, Hitoshi figured that something must have happened. A nightmare, perhaps? Nudging Izuku gently, Hitoshi directed them back to his bed and sat them both down. Under different circumstances, he wouldn't have been this bold, but this situation screamed for comfort and softness, so he would freak out about having Midoriya Izuku sitting on his bed later. Wanna talk about it? Hitoshi asked softly. Izuku trembled and nodded, but it took quite a bit of time before he verbally replied. I... Sorry for bothering you. I... I had a nightmare. It's stupid, I know, but... Hey, no. Hitoshi interrupted and wrapped an arm around his friend's shoulders. You're not a bother. And nightmares aren't stupid. You know that De... Aizawa has them too, right? And Yumada. And I bet a lot of our classmates have them too. Izuku giggled. You can call them dads, you know. It's cute. Once again, Hitoshi was reminded of how smart Azuku was. He wondered if anyone else from 1A had figured out that Aizawa and Yamada were his parents. But not to get off track here. He had to take care of Azuku, make him feel better again. There's that pretty smile, Hitoshi whispered. Then froze. Had he really said that out loud? From the surprised look on Azuku's face, he had... Hitoshi felt his cheeks catch fire, and he hastily got up. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that, he apologised. Hopefully this wasn't going to be a big deal. Hopefully Azuku wouldn't catch on to what this could mean. Hopefully that wouldn't ruin their friendship. Hitoshi, did you mean that? And oh, why did Azuku sound so unsure and full of disbelief? Didn't he know how beautiful and lovable he was? Well, 
from what Hitoshi had learned about his past. Maybe not. Swallowing his pride, Hitoshi forced himself to sit back down and, after a moment of debating, he took Izuku's hand. Yes, I mean it. You have a very pretty smile. And that was enough courage for one night. Now, do you want to talk about it? Izuku took a shaky breath, looking back down at his hands in his laps. Just, uh, y- usual. Everybody getting hurt because I wasn't fast enough? Izuku sniffled. Sighing, Hitoshi shuffled closer and pulled Izuku into a hug. It's okay, Izuku. We're all okay, and nothing bad happened. You know what? It's kinda Christmas already. Look, it's almost three now. It seemed like a hug and a distraction was the right thing to do, because Izuku hugged Hitoshi back, his strong arms holding him tightly, almost a little too tight. But Hitoshi couldn't care less. With everyone else, he would have complained and pushed them away. But Izuku was different. Izuku was special. A hug from him felt like a gift, and not like a meaningless gesture. Special, huh? Damn it. Where was Hitoshi's filter when he needed it? Was he that sleep-deprived that he couldn't keep his mouth shut? Izuku pulled back a little, his chin resting on Hitoshi's chest, his eyes glittering in the dark. You know, you're special to me too, Hitoshi, Izuku said slowly, biting his lip. Hitoshi's thoughts raced. He was special to Izuku. What did that mean? Did that mean... But Izuku kept talking. I... I kind of wanted to tell you tomorrow. But since it's technically tomorrow already... Hitoshi, I like you very much. As more than a friend. And I don't know if I'm reading this the wrong way. But I think you also like me. Like... 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 And I was wondering if you'd want to maybe go on a date with me? Obviously, you don't have to, and it's okay if you don't feel the same way, but I really wanted to tell you before I blurt it out at the wrong moment, because I always seem to have the worst timing, and would you please say something so I can stop talk? Instead of saying anything, Hitoshi leaned down and pressed his lips against Izuku, swallowing his last words. For a moment, the kiss lingered, and Hitoshi was sure that his heart was going to burst from everything he was feeling right then. But somehow, it didn't, and when he pulled back, Hitoshi smiled one of his honest, soft smiles. I really like, like you too, Izuku, and I would be very happy to go out on a date with you. For a moment, Izuku beamed at him. Then it caught up to him that Hitoshi had just quoted him and he buried his face back in Hitoshi's chest, groaning. This is so not how I planned this. Oh, you had plans. Care to tell me more about those plans? Hitoshi teased, one hand coming up to play with Izuku's green curls. "Mm Mm-mm, Izuku said, voice muffled. He shook his head no, clinging onto Hitoshi. This is embarrassing. Nah, I think it's cute. You're cute. And wasn't it freeing? being able to say stuff like that out loud. Izuku gave an unintelligible response and huffed. Hitoshi laughed silently, and then, feeling bold, he pressed a quick kiss to the top of Izuku's head. Honestly, though, I'm really happy you told me. I don't know if I would have ever grown the balls to tell you otherwise, but I really, I really like you, Midoriya Izuku. Hitoshi's cheeks burned up again, but the smile he was gifted with in return was so worth the embarrassment. I really like you too, Shinzo Hitoshi. And if they spent the rest of the night talking about Azuku's plans until they fell asleep cuddled in Hitoshi's bed, nobody would be the wiser. Until Kaminari found them when he was about to go get his insomniac friend for their Christmas brunch. Hey there, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It's Ella, and I hope you're still having a lovely day today. I told you it would be back to back uploads for this one. Oh, God, this figure's so cute. Honestly, big ups 
thank you to Change Girl Yuki for writing two such beautiful fix and uh, obviously I had to run to record them. I had to do it. As soon as like I could, I got the chance, I was on this. I was on it like a car bonnet, as they say. Um, and thank you so much for gifting them to me because it was just so cute and I had a great time. Um, yes, if you write fix, I'll probably read them. <laughs> that goes for everyone because I don't know I just like it it's a fun time and it's just extra fun but what did you guys think of the fic did you like it too have you been enjoying just rolling in the bloody shindeku content like all month I'm, I've am i been making so much shindeku I don't even know if they're like my favorite ship but I've just been reading so much of it and I just can't help myself I just love them they're just so cute but you know me I'm a multi-shipper kind of girl but are there any other pairings that you want me to read for? Let me know in the comments down below. And I might look up some for you. Find the fix for it. It'll be a good time. Also, <laughs> not that I like to announce these things, but it is my birthday on Friday. So I am planning to do some kind of birthday related fic. So if you have any birthday related fics, please send them my way. Because I'm trying to find like a really good one to read. Because I think it would be really fun. I have one potential one, but we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> um, do you know how hard it is waiting for permission for people? I'm like, I'm working on a schedule, people. I've got to get it done. <laughs> But yeah, go ahead, let me know. Just talk to me in the comments. You know I like to talk to you guys because I'm a chatty Cathy. Can't help myself. You can also like the video, you know, if you liked it. And to boost my serotonin levels. They've been down. Pull me out of the depressive spiral. I don't know. Post-Christmas is just a weird time. But if you want to keep hearing fun fix to pull you out of it in this kind of bit of nothing weeks, as I like to call them, then be sure to subscribe to be notified whenever I make new videos, which uh, I'm sorry if it's not daily anymore. I don't know what the schedule is going to be. I remember <laughs> Love how I was like, I'm going to take a break. Me two days later. <laughs> I've got two fix for you in one day. I definitely know how to prioritise things. <laughs> but you can also, you know, join the Discord. That's a good time. It's pretty hilarious over there. If you want to hear more of my ramblings, I spend a lot of time on there just talking to people and going on a lot of tangents if you like these end of video tangents you'll have a great time <laughs> because i talk way too much i do i really should stop talking remember when i used to not talk i was listening back to some of my old stuff like just like you know for prosperity or whatever and i was like oh shit remember when every time i spoke i was like i'm sorry for talking i know no one wants to hear me say anything and now I'm just like, listen to 10 minutes of me talking about nonsense. Have I told you recently that I love All Might? <laughs> I'll stop now, because you probably do want me to shut up. And that's perfectly fine. But what you've got to do, if you want that to happen, you know, until I see you again, is to practice some self-care. That's the only way, you know. If you want me to not go on 20-minute tangents about why you should stand All Might, you better be going to bed on time. You better be brushing your teeth. You better be eating fruits and veg five a day. You better be drinking lots of water. I don't know what the exact measurements are. As a child, I was always told it was eight glasses, um, which is not the same measurement as cups. I don't know what that means. Americans, I don't understand what a cup is. I, I mean, like I've seen them. I've used a cup before because you can buy cup measurements here, but no one uses them. And I only use them if I have to make an American recipe and the measurements are in cups and it's very confusing. Where are the grams, guys? Just measuring grams, it makes more sense. Also, drink some water, you fucking fiends. You're dying of dehydration. You're looking like Spongebob when he's all, like, crusty and, like, drying out in the Spongebob movie. That's you right now. So drink some fucking water because this is a threat. I'm getting aggressive now. Mmm, starting fights. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later.